Hey guys, Omar here and welcome to part three of building your photographic style. And what's hilarious is these videos have not gotten many views compared to like, let's say a lens review or like camera talk. And it's funny, it's like this stuff will make you a better photographer, working on your images, working on your composition, work, like getting out there and shooting. But it's kind of sad that like the videos we like to watch are gear, gear, gear. But anyway, back to the point. I've been making these videos to stop people from buying presets. Stop buying presets that are already pre-made. I mean, a lot of them are really nice, but you can build your own presets based on what you like. You just have to understand what the presets are doing. Now, most presets are uh, attractive because of their color look. Um, so today we're gonna talk about color a little bit. So in the first video, we talked about picking your curve. Uh, you can either have an S-curve, which has a lot of contrast, or you can have uh, what I call mid-tones up, which is a little bit of softer or more like a normal photograph, how it comes off the camera, like a JPEG. Then second, we build on top of that and we added a fade or no fade to your photograph. Now you gotta be careful with the fade because the fade could be a fad. So I have a feeling that the super fade, the, like the really super, super fade may a bit like fade out. <laughs> Stop it. My philosophy is anything that you love, like if you're crazy about a look, half it, half it, <laughs> so that you can tone it down a little bit and work from there. Okay, so we got our curve, we have our fade, no fade. Let's talk about color. You can either have no color normal color, or we can saturate or boost up the color of our images. All right, so let's start with our black and white. Let's start with this mid-tone up curve, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna black and white it here. And this gives you like a normal black and white, but you can make your own black and white look by messing with the stuff we talked about in the first two episodes. So this is just mid-tones up, which I consider kind of like normal photograph. Very simple, very timeless but if remember if we want to increase our fade so now this one is the most faded we have mid-tones up and we're very faded so that could be your black and white look we could also keep that fade and make this an s curve so we can bring this highlights up and then bring this down the shadows there and so now your black and white has kind of like an old filmy look. This is crazy. This might be too much fade. So remember, do something you like and then come down and have it a little bit. And then you get closer to maybe a look that's a little bit more accepted. Okay. What about an S curve? You know, so if we bring up the S curve here with no fade, you can really get some blacks that are really black. And so this is our S curve right here. So this is a little bit more dramatic than the mid tones up. And you can also play with this stuff using the blacks and the, and the shadows and the whites here. So instead of using your curve, you can bring your blacks way down and you can bring your, um, your whites up. And that also helps you get kind of the same look as a curve. So feel free to use whites and blacks instead of your curve. So as you can see, you can remove the color but still have the stuff in your foundation, that curve we talked about and the fade. Okay, so now I'm going back to my mid-tones up look and let's mess with saturation. Now, you don't wanna use saturation because it will mess with skin tones. So you kinda of wanna use either your vibrance. If you bring up your vibrance, you can see her hair there. And so you get a very saturated and what I consider normal saturation, which is this, or you can super saturate things. You can also go down in most editing programs, you can actually just pick colors. So if you notice the green in the back here, this green can uh, boost up. So you can boost up your images to either be mostly very vibrant, very colorful, or not so colorful, okay? One other trick is to lower your saturation and raise your vibrance a lot more. And so that gives you skin tones that are a little less orange and red. Um, and then this is good if you wanna add tones, which is the last thing we're gonna show you. Next, how cool you are. No problems there. 
You can mess with your temperature. You can mess with the temperature of your photograph. So you can be a photographer that's very warm, like all your orange, like your tones are orangey, you know, like these beautiful beach photographs that are warm, everything's warm. So you can be that type of photographer. Or you can be cool. Cause I'm the fun. You can be on the cooler side, more blues, more purples. So your temperature can be consistent in all your photographs. We'll do a portrait and then we'll do a breakfast. Okay, with the portrait, you can make your images warmer. And so that means your skin tones and your blonde hairs are usually very warm, very brown, or you can be more on the cooler side, okay? Now, one thing to note is when you take a portrait, you should have a proper white balance to begin with because if your images are coming back, you know, from your camera messed up, then warmth is really not going to help you because your, your whites are completely messed up. If you didn't get a white balance while you were shooting, you can get a white balance usually from an eyeball or something like that. And that gives you a good sense of what the real colors are. So just looking at two quick styles, this would be a photographer that has an S curve with a cool uh, tone. And here we have a faded. Here's an S curve faded. You see the fade right here on the curve and we're gonna warm this one up. So this photographer is a warmer, faded look, and this photographer is more cool with um, a S-curve. And then you can play with the other two. Like the one I like least, but I see that photographers used are brown, warmy tone, and very mid-tones up and faded. Okay, so that's one. And last but not least, we'll do the other combo. We'll do cool with mid-tones up. This is just a normal, quote, normal photograph. Someone asked me in one of the other comments, can you do these things with JPEGs? So this is a JPEG from my breakfast in Costa Rica. And so let's edit this using the styles that we've been forming. Now, the one thing to remember if you're editing JPEGs is you have to do everything a little bit more slight. Since the, J the JPEG image is completely like all the stuff is burned in, all the color and contrast, uh, you can't take huge swipes of your sliders. Everything is slight. So this is what it looks like straight out of camera. This is a JPEG image. I probably shot this in Provia film simulation. And so the first thing I want to do is pick my curve. And so let's do a, this is kind of like a popular look. We can do a faded. Um, and let's go easy. We're going to go, what curve we're going to use here. We don't really need much of a curve, but I'll go mid-tones up. I'll go mid-tones up there. Oops, that's picking the lights. I'll go mid-tones up here, mid-tones up with a little bit of fade, and we're gonna cool this breakfast. This is gonna be a cool breakfast. There we go, that's a look. And then just, if you wanna add some blacks, done. That's one look. Okay, resetting. Let's keep the same contrast. So here we go, we got kind of like an S-curve going there, S-curve and we are going to warm up the breakfast, okay? So that's a really warm breakfast. The other one was a cool and faded look. If you wanna fade this out, let's fade it out because that's so popular right now, guys. Oh my God, that is on Instagram immediately. So you can edit your JPEGs. Now the last step, the cherry on top, the whipping, the icing. Okay, stop, toning. Now, I don't like I used to tone a lot. I used to be tone low. And, but toning can be really effective and I think that's how these presets become so popular because the tones that are put in there. Now you can do a straight tone, which is a single tone, meaning you can kind of put like a little color on top of your overall photograph. Or you can do what's called split toning or even three-way toning where you can just tone the shadows. Like someone's hair will be more blue and someone's skin will be a different tone. Let's start with adding one tone to the photographs. Let's say you like brown. So on Lightroom, if you hold down the option key and just slide this hue around, you will see different tones. So let's say someone likes brown-ish. So this is kind of brown and yellow. I'm gonna let go. And now I can bring my saturation up and I can tone the entire photograph. Okay, so that's a, just adding one brown tone to all the photographs. Let's do it to the breakfast. Let's reset. Let's add a little exposure here because a little exposure. And hey, I like that. Where is it? Where is it? It's my brown. I do everything in that brown. Let's tone it up, tone it up. 
There we go. So it kind of acts like temperature if you use brown. Okay, so you can tone all your photographs and the thing is it will tone everything and give that co consistent look. Here's another way you can do it. Just put your saturation all the way up and actually find the color you want. And if you're a brown toner, you can find the brown and then bring it down to your liking and you could always have the same tone. So that's toning just with one tone. And I just toned the highlights there. You can actually do the same thing to both the highlights. Let's bring the saturation up of the shadows, find that brown that you like and then you can tone that too so this has an overall brown tone but what most presets have and most presets that people sell we called split toning split toning is your shadows and your highlights so what we're going to do is make the highlights one color and make the shadow another color so i'm holding down the option key here on a mac and I'm gonna get my color to be sort of this orange burnt brown. Let's go up, uh, I'll leave it down for now. And then I'm gonna make my shadows kind of like this purple blue. And there we go. So watch, if I raise, basically all the shadows will be one color and all the highlights will be another color. This is super exaggerated so you can see what a split tone is doing. Everything that's dark is gonna be bluish, anything that's light is gonna be brownish. And so now you find the levels that work for your image, okay? So a cool split tone might be something like that, where there's the skin has a little bit of a brown to it, and the shadows have a little bit of a blue to it, okay? And you end up with your split tone look. Of course, decide which photos it works better with. Uh, sometimes tones will look strange on a breakfast and look great on a portrait. So remember, save all your presets so you can keep finding don't buy presets, save your own as you work your way up from the bottom to the top. And so this is very overly simplified because with art and paint brushes and all the paint in the world, you could do whatever you want. So use this as kind of like a guide to start, but then forget it. You can mess with tones and temperatures and colors and contrast and just go crazy, man. But the key and the point is to kind of find a look that you like and try to produce work in that look. All right, I'll see you guys next time.